Assalamualaikum, welcome. Thank you so much for joining our session. I think it's probably going to be a very exciting session. I, we, myself and Riaz are going to be facilitating. Um, my name is Rashida. I'm an author and a, supposedly a blogger as well. I'm not very current and regular, but I do try now and then. Uh, and Riaz, of course, will, will introduce himself in a second. My job is as MC and facilitator is to you know, lay down all the house rules. So I'll just lay them down. Whether you follow them or not, I don't know, it's up to you. But please, no cell phones. Please, no in and out. Please, if you want to ask a questions, we're going to welcome questions because we want this to be a very interactive session. We've got you know, lots of young minds here and lots of interesting uh, people. So you want to get their insights. So we're going to allow this to be quite an interactive session. At the same time, though, because this is such a, a, a big panel, and we've only got an hour, we're gonna have to try and facilitate things and move things along. Anyway, uh, I will now introduce the people, but you know, I've got their bios, which is quite boring, so I'm gonna say one or two th of the boring, normal kind of things, and then I'm gonna ask them to say something about themselves that's not in the bio, that's gonna help you to get a quick insight into each of them. So, um, uh, Riaz will, will do himself. Okay, he's gonna sort himself up. I'm just gonna start as it's been given it to me, and you guys can just then say hi. So we've got Leila Abramji, who is, from Dramatic Doll House. She's a 20-something-year-old blogger. It's so nice. When you say 20-something, it doesn't matter even if you're 29. You're so young. You just enjoy it, you know. So she's a 20-something-old blogger, journalist, and teacher. So welcome. And she holds down four jobs. So yeah, you know, it's time to be young. You've got all the energy, so go for it. And uh, yeah, she loves reading, and she describes herself as a nerd. So you can't say that now. I've said it. So tell us a little something interesting about you. Something interesting, my husband is benefiting from my blog quite a bit. <laughs> he gets to go on all my journeys with me. Wonderful. So you, you, you said, marry me and I'll take you around here. Oh, <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, then we've got the Blackies, who's our only male panelist. So ask all your questions to him. Because you know, men all normally have an easy ride. So don't give him an easy ride here, please. So uh, he's a co-founder of I Love Zede. His wonderful, beautiful wife, Nadia, is here with us. She's my co-author to um, Saffron, and one of the co-contributors. So um, Riaz is a whole lot of things. He's a mover and a shaker, an entrepreneur. He's got a whole lot of boring credits to his name. But, you know, we'll skip that. What's your interesting thing to tell us? Um, well, you already said it was that my wife and I run I Love Zede have come together. Uh, but my son as well, he's a, we what we call a money influencer, so he started doing YouTube videos as well for himself, he's four years old, um, and he loves You guys thought you were young. <laughs> Watch it, the new generation is on our heels. <laughs> he knows all the brands of all the cars, um, and wherever we go, he loves learning new, new brands, and just talking about it on YouTube. Yeah, he's probably got good, uh, <laughs> good teachers. <laughs> And then, of course, Dr. Katie Ranchot, who is a medical doctor and with a particular interest in mental health issues, which I think is, you know, a, a huge challenge in our societies, and it's something that's becoming more and more challenging as we face it. And, the, of course, the biggest challenge is sometimes in our communities our, lack, our, our, our reluctance to talk about them, which, um, you know, is which just compounds the problem. Um, and I feel... Um, Honoured to have Kirti on the panel, and you know I'm going to look forward to how whatever she shares with us. Something interesting about you? That's not him. He didn't listen properly, but then he is the man on the panel. So we understand. <laughs> um, so I've been blogging for I think over a year now, but I've decided that being a neurologist is easier than blogging. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to say that. To oh, all of these one I think it's some reality that needs to be held from him. Somebody. <laughs> Okay, Zakia is 18 years old. Oh, wow. Okay, she's 18 years old, finally year of high school, and she's still trying to figure out what she wants. I think you'll get there. Don't stress too much about it. I think it'll find you whatever it is you need to do, so don't stress too much. Um, I love this about her. I love that she says that she wants to help people, and she wishes to spread inspiration, happiness, and positivity into the world. And that's wonderful, because I, I think it's so important that we have that kind of feeling going out in the world. And it's my personal thing as well, so yeah. Just a couple of decades, but we're the same person. I'm blogging only for like a year. It's still very small and curly, but um, I love it. It's more like a hobby. I still want to study and do something else. I'm sure you would. Thank you. Then, Neymar. 
right at the end next to Riaz. She's a Durban born author and blogger and you know she's living a childhood dream of being a writer. Um, and yeah, I mean I don't know if you've guys seen but I think her books are on a couple of stands out there. So she's making a name for herself. Um, and she also full, um, blogs the Imperfect Muslima. Yeah. I think that's such an interesting uh, title or name of her blog because you know how it is. There's so much pressure for us to be perfect. So, yeah, I think we can well, say. Okay. Yeah, so, um, I'm not very interesting, but I'll try. Uh, if you guys want to really want to know about me, it's the most important thing I think would be to say that in my house, the by far the vast majority of things in my house are books. So I love books, I surround myself with them, and sometimes I even slept on them, but that's it. Thanks, uh, Mehmet. Raisa is a Wits University student, um, and she calls herself a social media influencer, lifestyle blogger, and makeup artist. Okay, so that's why she looks so good today. Uh, I like that you love creating new content, inspiring people. I think it's essential that new content is, you know, that's what's happening. The fact that we're all here is because there's new content. And for us to be on top of things, it's just so much of new stuff every day. How does one keep up? But yeah, well, you know, hopefully people like Raisa and the other bloggers help to give us an insight into you know, they do all the hard work for us and just tell us what we should be thinking and doing. Raisa, anything you want to say that uh, about you? Um, well, also, I've also been blogging for just over a year, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm actually working on my own clothing brand at the moment. Okay, well, good luck with that. Melissa is a journalism graduate, um, and she's worked at newspapers in the advertising industry. Um, you know, she says that she, the blog is used as an author to share her pers to, to share a story and lessons with her daughters, and I think that's so amazing because I think people respond to the personal side of things. So even if you're a blogger, yes, you've got to have the, um, you know, the business side of things down. But people will respond to sincerity and honesty in your blogging. So if you're writing something, a, a, a topic that's close to your heart and personal, I think you're going to get a good response and following. So that's our panelist. Uh, Riaz is my fellow uh, facilitator, so he'll say a couple of words about himself and then he'll kick off with questions. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> we want this to be quite an interactive section, uh, session. Uh, so basically, I do quite a few things. Uh, I, my full time day job is working at Liberty on the investment. Uh, and then I work on the radio station, East Wave Radio. I've um, been there for the past sure, 15 or so years. And then I also I have a website called Sydney Talkies where I blog about everything Bollywood. So that's been my passion for many years, and I've been doing that. So, yeah, that's my <coughs> Thanks, thanks very much. Yeah. So I was thinking, uh, with a lot of us being here this afternoon and wanting to know. What exactly is required? So if I want to be a blogger and uh, I just don't know where to start, where does one start? So if there's anyone on the panel that would like to answer the question, yes. Um, well, I think first you need to identify who your target audience is. Mm -hmm. So you need to see what you want to create, what you want to blog about, what you want to speak about, what your journey is. So for example, if you want to start up a fashion blog, uh, you need to kind of like identify who your target audience is, the age, and that kind of thing, and then post, start posting from there. And also make sure that your page is presentable and appealing for other people to look at. Does it require a lot of budget if I'm starting off? I don't think that it requires a lot of budget, but it does require a lot of time. So I think all the bloggers here will agree that blogging takes up a lot of your time. So you need to have the time to actually be like consistent you can't just leave your blog for a few weeks or a few you know a few months because then you lose following you lose your your audience so you you do need to be on it all the time how does one market one's blog once you decide to start it off you use social media um there's instagram there's facebook there's twitter it obviously depends on your audience i actually said who's your target audience so if you were to <coughs> going on the example of fashion blogging um, Instagram would be the place that you would be able to create most of your <coughs> People would like to see the fashion. Um, Twitter, not so much. Um, so you would stick more to, to, to visual. So your um, Instagram, maybe Facebook. Um, yeah, so it just depends on, on your on your audience and what you're looking for. I think also sometimes you do need to get professional help in terms of increasing your social media presence and 
Uh, so event. basically buying an influ uh, influencer to do how does one or marketing or buying somebody who understands social media marketing to do it and other people that do that yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. i think i think another yeah. thing is also working with other social media influencers yes. so people who are already recognized in the industry yes. working with them creates a lot of exposure for your brand okay. and also hashtags are like everything hashtags mm -hmm. make yeah. your brand <laughs> now, now being young people most of you are quite young compared to russia i'm a bit how does one uh, how is one taking serious with, with what you're doing? So for example, if you're doing fashion or whatever you're blogging on, how do you make sure that people take you serious in, in what you're doing or, or, or blogging about? I think for me the thing um how people take me serious. It's the fact that I'm consistent. Okay. Um, so I vlog a lot about entrepreneurship and women doing um, women entrepreneurs or personal finance, mm -hmm. and where I and our <coughs> is all the Okay. And um, the things that I know, I share with people. That's also how people take you serious. If you share things that you know, so if you are a business, and you share, people ask a question, then you answer that. So being consistent and sharing your knowledge, that is how people take me serious. Now being so, a blog, thank you. Being a blogger can be quite challenging as well. How does one make sure that you, <coughs> that you remain relevant within the sphere? Um, I think I'm blogging on something a little more serious. I'm doing yes. uh, how to keep your brain healthy mental. and yeah. how to um, yeah, prevent memory problems, depression, dementia. Yeah, sure. And even in that space, it does become challenging to be taken seriously, firstly. Um, I forget the question she started asking. <laughs> She's not good for my promoting how to protect my blog. <laughs> yeah, so how do you stay relevant? I yes. think it is just to keep up to date with, for me, the, uh, the latest publications, the research, and to make it very practical. Okay. But even with that, I think you still have difficulty accessing the right people. Yeah, I think it, it has to do with what your intention is. Yes. So um, she was saying if you if you have a target audience, mm -hmm. but a lot of us, or I, I'm thinking myself, when you start blogging, you don't know what you're going to blog about, mm -hmm. but you have an intention. Mm -hmm. So my intention was I wanted to start a mommy, share my motherhood experience, and then eventually it changed to entrepreneurship. So with my intention with entrepreneurship where I want to connect with entrepreneurs, I have to keep in the loop with things that's going on in my industry. So I think maybe as a fashion blogger or as a book blogger, how you keep relevant is you mingle with the right people sure. in your niche. Right yeah. And that's right. how you stay relevant. Um, another thing that I see, like you, you should picked up on, uh, a lot of people actually use this as a business tool as well, where they become successful. I, uh, I know there's a gentleman, I don't know if you said his name, and I know he, him and his wife basically travel the world uh, via social media and is creating uh, and forcing awareness of all the places he goes to, etc. So it can be used as a business as well. How does one go in that direction? So, I do uh, product reviews as well as yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> a lot. So, we do that. Basically, people approach us and yes. then from there, we'll go to see the resorts. Sometimes it's not the resorts that everybody expects to see. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's somewhere where you'd never go unless you were invited to. Mm -hmm. It just depends on what you get. But products, they often send it to you and you still need to remain authentic. But still keep your business interest in mind, which creates quite a conflict. Because you don't want to be too harsh and say your products are rubbish, but at the same time you don't want to lie to your audience. So it is a marketing tool, but it is it there is a conflict there. Any anyone else? Yeah, I think that a lot of businesses are now switching to social media yes. advertising compared to billboards and having our flyers and things like that. Because a lot of people actually check social media for relevant things. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time businesses do approach bloggers and they're like, okay, I'd like you to review this or I'd like you to visit our restaurants or our resort or whatever it is. And I think the, the main thing is that you have to stay honest. 
Like, you know, it's, it's so important because if you're going to lie to your audience, they already, you already lose your authenticity. <coughs> it's like, they're like, okay, but they said it was so good and then they go and try it out and it's actually, doesn't live up to standards. So, uh, it's it is important. To make, uh, I yeah. know you have Musa quite well and he literally sells his shows via social media. Yeah. You'll see there's no conventional advertising. And he always found that Facebook works, Instagram works, and that's what he does. Anyone else? Last. So comments? I started freelancing last month. Yes. And I used my Instagram stories and basically my networks that I have on social media to promote the fact that I'm a, uh, a writer. Yes. Yeah. So um, I think that the fact that you, you implement things and, like I said, you, you have an intention of something, mm -hmm. and then people get to know who you are and what you do. Um, we have a lot of things we don't just like she doesn't just do fashion there's other things that she talks about too so um i think that that is how the whole marketing thing works and and how she gets to sell her products like if i'm a mommy blogger then you'll see a lot of home products of mine or <coughs> maybe baby products or whatever me selling things that i can relate to and then my audience can relate Fantastic, I'm going to become an iPhone blocker. <laughs> 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 I think maybe this is a good point for me to come in because what I've, you know, ultimately, I think what everybody would love to do or eventually is to be able to monetize your blogs. Yes. So how, I mean, what is the process for that? And I mean, I know that's quite a broad question and I think Melissa's already touched on it. Have any of you managed to successfully monetize your blogs? And I mean, I, I'm assuming everybody understands what that means. You can actually earn income from your from your blogging because right now, if you're blogging and you know, you know, you're not going to get any um, income for it. But how does that exactly work? And I'm assuming that people are going to be interested in that answer. And so I don't know who who hasn't spoken. I think we've got to give Zakia a chance. Have you had an opportunity yet to do any monetizing? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. But, okay. um, I work with. I'm a book blogger. Right. So I work with publishers. Uh, in South Africa, and they send me books to review. So essentially, it's a free book in exchange for an honest review. So I don't make money from it, but I do get the product. Save on all your save on money for books. Yeah. For books, yeah, we all know how to get some books. Yeah, and the latest releases, and then that's also how to stay relevant because publishers will send me books that are newly released or yes. books that are coming out in the next few months. Yes. I get to read them maybe ahead before they're published or before they're in stores. And that's also how to keep up keep relevant and keep posting content that um, the audience would want to see because they want to see what's new being released and what books are coming out. So I can speak about that on, say, the publishing day or before the publishing day. And so tell me, the, the books that they send you, are they specifically what you would enjoy or do you have to read a wide variety of them? Uh, it's a mixture. So I, yeah. get, I get to request oh, books okay. that I would like. So I try to vary my reading interests and try different sorts of books. So to match different target audiences, because maybe not everyone wants to read what I want to read. Yes. So I'll try maybe reading non-fiction once in a while, or historical <coughs> fiction, just to mix it up. Yeah. yeah, it is books that I'm interested in. Because that's also another interesting point, because we say we have to understand our tar target audience, which is essential. You've got to know who you're writing to, and then make sure you're marketing to them exactly what they want to hear, or you know, even what they don't want to hear, but at least they'll be interested in, 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 in reading. How does, how does one make sure that our target audience is still the same? Because we started writing about mummy blogging and now we're writing about entrepreneurship. Did our target audience change? Did we educate them and take them along the route or did we have to find a new audience? How does that work? So how, how it's worked for me, um, I've, I've also struggled with this whole thing of niche because um, a lot of people say a niche is good, having a niche is good. It is, a, it is good because I got a sponsorship for my personal finance section. <laughs> but I feel that because I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a mom as well, there's a lot of other women that can identify with that. So I don't necessarily put myself in a box. We are people with different interests. So people will look at your Insta stories and even though they're not interested in tech but they see you are doing something in tech that's relatable, mm -hmm. you can still share that with them. And um, I, I don't think that we should have this thing where we should close. I mean, I yes. like her fashion Absolutely. stuff. Yeah. And 
Maybe I'm beige, beige can be some makeup or whatever. Yeah. But but it's like we all have different we interests. All kind of like yeah. Yeah. So you can, can be quite restricted with different interests. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. At, at this point, do we need to get some chairs here? This seems to be a popular session. There are one or two. If the people with the kids want to come through, they want to here. Otherwise, I can always these kids outside. They're supposed to help us. Maybe if you get one or two chairs. We just put them along here. So everybody's comfortable. Zia, um, do, uh, do you want to say anything specifically about monetizing your blog? Because I know your website is not a is not a blogging website, and I don't know if people are interested. We can also take some questions on the technology side of things because that's important. You know, to have a good platform for your for your blogs to be broadcast on, and you know, there there, there are a couple of options, but maybe one or somebody can speak about that. But I'm talking about specifically your website is not a blogging website per se, is no, it? No, no. Um, so, we're actually running it as a full-time business, my wife and I. Um, it's an, actually an e-commerce website, so it's an online store, a full online store, which at the moment we're just pausing it because we're doing a little bit of reconstruction to it. Um, because people land on the site and they're not sure what the website is, whether it's an online store, whether it's a, a, a blog. Um, so, like um, Sakia was saying, there is the monetizing by trade exchange. So there's a lot of brands that are um, doing trade exchanges because they find it easier, when, especially when you're starting out to blog. Um, they don't trust you that much uh, to pay you. So they'll give you something in exchange. Either you come to an event or you review a book or whatever the case is. And once you start building up a reputation, then they start saying to you, okay, we're going to throw a thousand there or five thousand there, um, and you can advertise or you can run a campaign for us type of thing. Um, we have the advantage that we have an online store as well. So products that sometimes we review, we can link it to our online store and say, um, for example, the Saffron book. Right. Um, you know, we, we attended the, the book launch and um, this is the, what the book is about and you can purchase it online mm -hmm. and we offer free delivery throughout South Africa or whatever the case is. Um, so there are different types of ways of monetizing it. There's also, we do social media advertising. So um, you, you can just, uh, because we have, we, uh, um, promoting everything South African. So we have not a niche market, but we have a very large audience. Um, and we doing it not only in South Africa, but also overseas. So we, that's why we're the dot com, so we're reaching an international audience. And we want to promote businesses, so we try every way in which we can. We have a business directory um, where people can list their business on there. We have the social media advertising, uh, the online store, um, yeah, so we there, there are different ways in which to, to, to monetize. What we do as well with the bloggers is we offer the service where up-and-coming bloggers can come onto our website and we share their stuff through our website, through our social media as well. And we've had quite a few success stories where there was one food blogger on Instagram that we actually um, took her uh, recipes on Instagram and we put it on our website and because of that, and I say because of us, but um, <laughs> she grew the business where she's now a fully fledged business and she's doing advertising and reviews for other brands. So that, those are the type of services that we offer. Um, some we charge for, some we do for free. That's another thing is that when you're starting out blogging, if you want to go into it as a business, you have to be prepared to do work for free. Um, the main thing why you would have started the blog is because you have a passion for something. Um, whether it's travel, food, fashion, whatever the case is, but you have that passion and you mustn't forget what the goal is, is that you want to um, create awareness for that particular um, sector. And yeah, so you have to be prepared to, to do free work, go to events, do a few reviews, even if you do it out of your own pocket when you first start off. We did that as well. We didn't know about you know all these other things. We used to go to a place, and if we liked it, we used to write a review, yeah. and then share it. Because that, there you build the audience, you're giving honest reviews, you've been there, you've been as a customer. We don't go in and we say, oh, I'm Zia from I Love Today, give me the best service. We go there as paying customers, and you know, give authentic reviews. 
think I'm talking over okay. my <laughs> <laughs> I actually want to take the discussion in a little bit of a different direction now, uh, more about, you know, how you actually get all your ideas out. But before that, is there any specific questions about what we've just been discussing about the monetizing? Yes. So, so you know, how do you fill up the following base? I'm just starting up, and I just got my friends out just following me, so they said, please follow us. How do you get to where you guys are thousands and that's what I'm following? Uh, well, it depends on what you want to do with your page. So if you want to, you know, it's build a business page. A business page. Yes. So I think... Um, like on Instagram, for instance, they give you that option where you can advertise and you pay that amount and you can pay it. Does it go to a certain amount? It does go to the audience that you do pay for. Okay. So Instagram does offer that where they promote your post. Well so as that as does as also as reach as a lot of people and it's a lot of exposure for your business because it comes up on different people's pages, if I'm correct. So no and it's kind of like a promoted so post. So with me, I started off with, um, I actually started off posting motivational messages. I had like probably about six or 700 followers, which were just like my close friends and things like that. And uh, I started posting my poetry because I, I write poetry. I started posting motivational messages on a daily basis. Um, and when I started doing that, my followers started increasing. And then I started posting um, outfits, like daily outfit um, ideas, and my hashtags, and other people were sharing my posts or liking my posts or telling people, oh, did you see, you know, this, this review or whatever it was. I also started off reviewing, like, just different businesses going as a paying customer and just writing honest reviews, and people appreciated that. So it kind of grew from there. So, yeah, I think yeah. what is very important is more and more, uh, that's how people are deciding on, you know, on their purchase or on what they're doing. They go and look at the reviews. Nowadays, it's almost impossible for me to decide that I'm going on this particular trip or I'm doing this without going and seeing what the reviews are. So, you know, that's, the, we understand the value of that. So as bloggers, they, you know, you need to be able to capitalize on that for your own sake and to get your, your traffic through. Yeah, Sorry. I just want to... Yeah. Um, okay. It also depends on what you want to sell. Um, say if you if you are targeting mommies, there's a lot of mommy Facebook groups, yeah. mm. um, private groups, but they also have the option where you can place an ad there, and then everyone in the group sees. Yeah, it gets shared. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it gets shared. But I mean, everyone sees that you are s selling this thing, or if, if there's an entrepreneur, um, maybe you're a speaker or something. If there's a specific group, you can always go to that group and find out there how can you advertise your services. Yeah. But um, the one thing that I that I that I've seen at work and hashtags, it, it helps a lot but is your insta stories yes yeah. so insta stories is where you post yes yeah you know what insta stories is or facebook but stories only, only your followers get to see that not all your followers yeah. get to see that but if you put hashtags in that yeah. you put in 10 or less okay. hashtags in there then other people um I'm if i say it. entrepreneur life or whatever mm -hmm. something i want people mommy bloggers or whatever to see it then i just put a hashtag in there and then People outside your audience, they, they also get to see that. So um, use the Insta stories and video also works for us mm -hmm. as bloggers. Sorry, Sia, you, 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 did you want to say something? Yeah. Um, what, what is it that you are selling if you don't mind me asking? I'm a designer. Designer? Designer, designer yes. Okay. So um, if you look at maybe a social media influencer partnering with them, yeah. and that could also you know get your reach up because they would say, I'm wearing this by so and so. And or even run a competition with them, you know. You give yeah. uh, give some jewelry away, not like all that, but you know, or a discount or voucher or something, you know. Yeah, they can come um, to me something designed. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that, and that that also would 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 help you with your following. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else want to say anything specifically about that? Because the next question I wanted to ask is, how you come up with your ideas? You know, how you brainstorm. Topics. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe Kirti, you want to take that, you know, because this is not your 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 subject matter is not easy subject matter, you know. So, so it's not popular. Yes, so it's, it's not easy subject matter actually. Yes, uh, I'm not trying to monetize it because I do think even in terms of right. ethics for me, that just a little it becomes a little bit grayer in mm -hmm. terms of the advice I give. So there's no pharmaceutical mm -hmm. company sponsorship, etc. Um, in terms of ideas, I think I do have a message that I want to get out there. Mm -hmm. And so I think because there's a specific message, 
you do find ideas that are consistent with that. So because my focus is on how to think better and think clearer and protect your memory, prevent dementia, there's, the, there's enough research and literature right. that I can tap into right. in terms of generating this. Yeah. So, I mean, that's going to be my next question. How, how important is it to do research? I mean, I, I, I would hate to think that uh, you're, you're writing on a particular topic and there was just something new that was launched last week that's contradicting what you're saying. You know, has anyone of you ever experienced something similar or how do you prevent that kind of, you know, inadvertent mistake from happening? Anybody name it, maybe? Uh, it's, it's never happened to me, thank you. Okay. But thank I, think, you. <laughs> I think the best thing to do is just to make sure that you're reading up on everything. If, that's also how you make sure that you get taken seriously because your knowledge is backed up. You know that you can be confident in what you're saying. So I think that research is absolutely vital. More so than just sitting down and writing something, you need to research, you need to read up on it in advance so that you're not afterwards thinking, oh, I didn't say this and this would be so vital if increase my readership or I said that and it's actually not it's not supported by anything. So I think research is actually more important sometimes than the actual writing of your posts. Okay, and as an author it's for me personally it's it's very critical for me to get other eyes on my work or to get editors to look at it. Is that something that either any of you have had to consider? Um, you know, have there been glaring mistakes in your blog that you regretted the morning after? Make a lot of grammatical errors. Yeah. <laughs> that I have to edit. Oh, okay. So there is some because you invariably one doesn't pick up one's own mistake. You know? No, you can read it better when it's somebody else's. I think blogs are more forgiving than books. Yes. Yeah. Yes, but still, I mean, you want to, I think it's all part of your credibility, you know, you don't want to necessarily, yeah, an odd mistake here or there, people will forgive, but if you're going to make this recurring mistake over and over, people are going to wonder, I'm sure. So there are some tools that you can use yes. if you don't have the capacity to hire somebody or if you don't have anybody in your life who is willing to read your posts. The most useful thing for me is to read it out loud, because right. if you're reading it out loud, you'll notice it. Yeah. That, that, I mean, that helps, I think, any any writing, you know, reading it out loud. It's amazing how you can, things just, uh, uh, you perceive things differently when you're hearing it as opposed to just seeing it. So that's very good advice, I yeah, think. Yeah, and also, I'm Afrikaans. Yes. So my husband used to read through my stuff. I got better eventually, so he doesn't read through my stuff anymore. But what I do is, um, I mean, you can do the reading out loud thing that helps a lot. But also taking a break from your work, right. and then after a few hours or after a day, you, you read it again with fresh eyes. Right. That's also very helpful. Yes, I found that you can add it. Luckily, two days after. Okay. There are free, free grammar tools. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Grammarly, which I think help. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I, I asked earlier about the technology and the process. If anybody has any specific questions about that, because these people have done it, so you know. Yeah, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, basically. Ask them if you need to know anything specific. Um, maybe one of you want to talk to us about one or two of the actual, um, what do you call them? The, the, you know, like the Wix or the WordPress, what do you call those things? Your actual platforms. Your platforms. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Does anybody want to take that question? Yeah, I'm on Blogspot. So yeah. with Blogspot, it's part of Google. So there is an opportunity to monetize on it because mm -hmm. Google does, once you've reached a certain amount of followers and certain amount of posts, you can um, share Google ads via your blog. So every time one of my readers click on my ad, I get paid. And once I've reached a certain limit, they pay you up. Okay. So even if you think my ads are better on blogs, they really help in getting money from the blog. So please click on all ads on every website. <laughs> okay. Um, was there a question back then? No. Okay. Sure. Sure. Um, so I don't know if there's. Uh, is there anything else on the process and technology side of things apart from the? How does the hashtag work exactly? I mean, I I I, I don't know. You know, every time it's, you just put the so you, little you, icon, but you put what's relevant. So, yeah. for example, if you're posting an outfit that you're wearing, mm -hmm. you'll hashtag things that are relevant to your outfit, whether it's the color 
or your shoe or the brand or anything that's relevant to the picture. And then you've got to do that specifically as an as a as an icon, or do you just put it into your into your? Uh, a lot copy? of people, what they do is they'll post like their their actual comment underneath their photo, and they'll do another post with just the hashtag. Oh, because you can put about thirty hashtags. About yeah. Yeah. Yeah, about 30 hashtags. So, and a lot of people actually download a hashtag tool. So you'll kind of type in what hashtags you're looking oh, for. Okay. So for example, scenery and 100 hashtags will come up and you can choose from those hashtags and what's relevant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, it, and are they rated in popularity as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's, then that's quite easy. You don't really have to think too much about it. But no. you can also, um, like if you're a fashion blogger and you follow her, mm -hmm. you can just check what she hashtags. Yeah, and you can kind of use the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> so you can just follow some people and then use some of the hashtags if you don't know what hashtag. Yeah. 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 Sorry, is that okay you're saying? So you have a specific hashtag for what you do, so your followers mm. know that. So in case if they missed your post or something, they just track your hashtag and all the posts that you did. And do people share hashtags inadvertently? I mean, I'm sure you probably have say something like hashtag outfit of the day, and I'm sure there's you know ten other people who use that similar hashtag. There's like thousands of the same people <laughs> that use the, the hashtags. That it comes up. So I mean, don't you get? Doesn't the your audience then get flooded by this? How how do you make sure that you know people are not bogged down by too many of the same messaging? Does that happen? Um, so I think it's like directed at your post. So by using hashtags, you're trying to reach a wider audience. So for example, if you use the hashtag outfit of the day mm -hmm. and someone clicks on it and they're going through outfits and they see your post, they're most likely to check out your page and that's how you kind of increase your following. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So she was saying, yes, you have a specific hashtag, like yours would be the bookish yeah. nerd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you click on the bookish nerd, then all the other posts will, show. will come up. So if yeah. I have my hashtag, then all my posts will come up. up. So yeah. yeah. So at one mm -hmm. so you can see everything. You, you can like the posts yeah. content. You follow them. Okay. Yeah. And it's okay. also possible to follow hashtags these days. Yeah. So your yeah. very dedicated followers won't have them on the to you. But but no. Sorry. Yes. Um, tying into that, wouldn't you find that your voice gets lost in the stream anyway? So. You hashtag um, Armani something, and then you've got 10,000 people hashtagging the same thing, and then your voice gets lost. How do you avoid that, or how do you try to keep relevant? Do you just then move on to the next post? Um, do you write up a new post? And I'm sure no can also talk about that. <laughs> I don't. Um, but, well, you yeah. you have obviously you have a sea of people yes. there yeah. with this mm. different mm. hashtags. But your aim is to get new followers. That's why you use the different um, hashtags. So it doesn't really matter if you get lost into the sea. Um, posting consistently, that, yeah. that also helps. So with, yeah, yeah. By, by posting consistently, you gain a, a bigger audience. Okay. So a lot of the time, if like the way the hashtags work is the more likes your picture has, the higher your post will be up on, on that specific, on that hashtag. specific so hashtag. So if you have okay. outfit of the day and you have 10,000 likes and someone else has 500 likes, your post is most likely to be higher up than theirs. And in addition to that, mm -hmm. and I think with I love ZA, this is more relevant, but you have an SEO strategy that you use to remain um, searchable on Google all the time. Yes. Okay, so SEO is search engine optimization. I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> but well, maybe you just want to explain that a little bit if there's anyone who needs clarity and then then answer the question. Okay, so search engine optimization, you essentially want to be number one on Google's page. You don't want people, when they search for I love ZA, you are on number page 30 or four. Can I just interject? Okay. I heard um, that actually most guys actually want to be number three on the search engine because the first human two. behavior is such that <laughs> The, we don't click on the first two, we click on the third. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, that's, that's true right. because the first two are normally paid for. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. the third yeah. one is the. Yeah. It's actually the first one that's, yeah. Yeah. that's, that's yeah. naturally yeah. liked. Yeah, that's okay. organic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the way we um, built up our reputation and the, the search engine optimization is that. We've partnered with a lot of uh, PR companies that send us information on a daily basis. So we're sending out information all the time. 
Um, so we've actually built quite a base where you don't have to buy a newspaper anymore. You can just come online and read everything there. And that's, that's helped us to actually move up the rankings in South Africa or worldwide as well. Um, but if you're blogging, normally you would have to, um, you could use your, your, what you call your tags in, in your blog. So you have your meter tags and your, your, your normal tags. So you would tag a picture. Um, so if you'd rename a picture, just so that people could find that picture, whether 